Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we finally get to talk about one of my favorite baits for bass fishing of all time, especially for spring bass fishing. We have like prime time conditions here today, 56 degree water temperature, pre-spawn fish, and we're gonna be talking about the chatterbait. Everything that I wish someone would have told me when I started fishing this bait, it's been one I've been fishing for years. Every spring, have it tied on. I almost have it tied on all the time. I literally have a special rod, singular, just for chatterbaits. I never cut it off. I have one tied on 365 days a year. That's how much I like this bait. So we're gonna talk about everything I've learned over the years of fishing a chatterbait and help you you catch more bass so stay tuned and let's get right into it so for starters let's talk about your rod and reel combo i mentioned that i have a certain rod and reel combo that i just use for fishing chatter baits while this is a specialty setup and we'll talk about that here in just a second you can use this rod for other things and i have before i've used it for like small deep crankbaits you can use it for um, spinner baits it's pretty much very versatile rod I just like fishing a chatterbait that much that I pretty much always have that on. So what this rod is, is an Icon Chatterbait Series rod from Cashin. This is a seven foot one, moderate fast, medium heavy rod, and it's rated from a half ounce to an ounce and a half lure. While a lot of chatterbaits that I fish are 3 8 ounce, it will throw just fine on this rod. All that means is that this rod has a very stiff backbone to it, and that's what you need. So this rod, does not bend down into the butt section at all. It only bends in the tip, but it bends about 40 to 50% of the way down the tip. So you have a bunch of backbone here. One, because you have a single hook on your chatterbait. So while that hook is very sharp uh, and you need it to be sharp, that extra backbone can help drive that hook into those fish when they bite it sometimes and you won't have them come off. But you also have that softer tip at the top so that that moderate fast action, when you're reeling it, a lot of times you're reeling this chatterbait pretty quickly, and if a fish comes up and bites it and you set the hook with that stiff backbone, you would just yank that bait away from the fish. It gives it just enough delay for that fish to get that bait in its mouth, and then you stick them. Uh, the other thing this backbone does is allow you to snap that bait out of the grass. So a lot of times you're fishing a chatterbait in the grass, you're gonna need to rip it free from the grass, and to do so, you need a rod that has some backbone to it. A lot of people fish glass rods and that's perfectly okay. I've fished glass rods for a long time. The thing with a glass rod though is sometimes they bend too far down into the butt section. They still have the backbone, but they'll bend a little too far down. And when you go to snap, it doesn't give you that crisp, uh, snap free from the grass and sometimes you'll have to fight it a little bit no matter what if you're fishing a chatterbait sometimes depending on how thick the grass is you'll have to fight it through the grass just a little bit um, but the rod right here is the most important part of your chatterbait setup so make sure you either get a chatterbait specific rod make sure you get something with that moderate fast action and that medium heavy to heavy power with that butt section backbone so that you can really set the hook on this fish but still snap it free from the grass now with your reel not as important. Um, I just fish a Corrado MGL 150 right here. Um, I just have the matching reels across all my rods so that they all fish the same. This is the 7 4 to 1 gear ratio. Can get a far cast with it um, and be able to reel quickly if I need to keep it over the top of grass or I can slow my reel down and get that bait a little bit deeper if I need to. And then for your line, Go with straight fluorocarbon 100% of the time. It will work much better than other stuff. Um, you can use braid if your grass is very, very thick and you have to rip it free, but you will start to lose some fish because of that because you know, that braid doesn't have any stretch at all. This fluorocarbon, while it doesn't have much stretch either, it has just enough in combination with that rod tip to land more fish. So I run straight 17 pound fluorocarbon. I used to run 20. That'll keep your bait up a little bit higher. The 17 is like a good in-between. Um, if you really need to get your baits down a little bit deeper, you can go with 15, um, but I usually don't do that just because it gets the baits just a little bit too deep. Um, and a lot of times I want that abrasion resistance with how much cover I'm fishing this bait through. I'll go that 17 or 20 pound route to make sure I can stick those fish and get them in the boat. When it comes to chatter bait selection, I keep it really simple. Number one, I'm not gonna tell you that you need a jackhammer. Everyone will say that you need a jackhammer. And while if you can afford a jackhammer, I highly recommend going to buy it. I've been fishing on a budget for a long, long time. I know how it is. 
and sometimes you can't afford a $16 bait to go throw and most likely lose to a pike. The Z-Man Chatterbait Elites are half the price and they will work just fine. So that would be the next one I would recommend. There are a bunch of other vibrating jigs on the market, ones with split rings, um, the Chatterbait Original, all that stuff. I would not recommend any of those. You do want a good quality Chatterbait. The Z-Man Chatterbait Elite has a good hook in it. It vibrates nicely. The blade is attached to the head, but it has good quality components. I would highly recommend that one if you cannot afford a jackhammer. But if you can't afford the jackhammer, that is going to be the one to go with. This thing is an absolute killer, catches a ton of fish. Um, something about the way they designed this bait, it just absolutely works. I know the Thunder Cricket is out there as well. I've seen people use it a lot. I have never used one, so I'm not gonna recommend it. Um, I'm not gonna say anything about it. If you do like them, go for it. But I'm not gonna say I haven't liked them. I'm not gonna say I do like them because I've never used one. A lot of the other ones, the, uh, the other bladed jigs on the market, the split ring ones, the Z-Man originals, I have fished all those personally, and there's a reason why I don't fish them anymore. Once you pick your favorite chatterbait, there's a couple things you're gonna have to focus on. One is color and one is size. So when it comes to size, if you could only get one, it would be a half ounce. That's the one I fish 95% of the time. It will work anywhere from three to 10 foot of water. You can fish it slow enough to work in any of that area. The three eighths works really well if you fish less than like four or five foot of water a lot, especially in like one to three. That three ace is very good up there uh, and it'll keep that bait up and you can reel it slow enough without it pounding into the bottom the whole time. But I don't use that one very often. Maybe another 10% of the time I'll use that one. Um, and then they make three quarters, an ounce and all that. I don't even mess with those. Sometimes if you need a bait to get down that far, you could use it. I've never messed with a chatterbait over a half an ounce. If I'm throwing one, there's a very good chance that I have a half ounce chatterbait tied onto my rod. If it's not a half ounce, it's probably a three eighth. So that's the way that I keep it really simple there. And then for your color selection, bluegill colors is your number one. So something green pumpkin, this one's Be Height Delight with a little bit of chartreuse and green pumpkin. That's gonna be my number one route to go. Green pumpkin something. It doesn't matter what other colors are in there. Green pumpkin is gonna be your number one that you're gonna to want to throw, need to throw. A lot of times these fish are feeding on bluegills around the grass and that's why I'm gonna throw that color. Other than that, black and blue, if you have some dirty water, it will work. Uh, I don't throw that one as often. And then a white or a shad pattern or white and chartreuse, have to have that color as well if you have some shad eating fish, whether they're in the grass or fishing around rocks or something like that and they're eating shad as well. Gotta have that for that scenario as well. So those are the three colors that I fish. I get those three colors in the same exact trailer and the chatterbait. So I have them in my jackhammer and half ounce and three eighths. That's pretty much it. And then I have a Gary Yamamoto Zacco as my trailer. And that's the only trailer that I really fish. Um, you can fish some other ones like some beaver or stuff. Um, the Sixth Sense Bongo is a good one. The Rage Menaces, any of that stuff I've seen people use. I've used them a little bit. I'll stack it vertically with the claws vertical if I do. Um, I have seen people say that if you actually put it where the claws are flat, it will come through cover better like wood so it won't roll over as easy. Never really tried that one that much. Mostly because when you put those claws flat, they don't have anything to vibrate, so they just kind of shimmy side to side and it just looks weird. Um, I've stacked them vertically to try and imitate the same bluegill shape of this Zacco before, uh, but truthfully, the Zacco is just my number one choice. If I'm throwing a chatterbait, I'm just gonna put a Zacco on there and go fishing. It's tried and true, it works. Uh, there's a reason why everyone fishes it. It's just a simple technique and it works overall. While you can play around with trailers and everything like that, oftentimes it's about finding the fish and not getting too complicated with your tackle. So I try to keep it really simple and have this setup that I know works for me every time. I always have 17 pound test line. I always have this chatterbait rod. I always have either a 3 8 or a half ounce jackhammer and I don't have to buy a hundred jackhammers. I buy a couple simple select colors and sizes and a couple bags of Yamamoto Zaccos and I know my chatterbait setup works the same every single time and I'm good at landing fish like that. I've practiced it numerous times. I know how that rod works when a fish eats it. I know what it should feel like when it's in the water and that's how you get better with a technique is keeping the variables simple and changing a little bit at a time until you dial in that technique just right. So that's why I keep it that way. 
it has a tight shimmy on this trailer, mimics the bluegill perfectly, and you're good to go. So I don't have to buy that much tackle. I got three bags of Zaccos and some jackhammers, and we're good to go fishing. So let's head out on the water. We'll show you how and where I like to fish this thing, and hopefully we'll catch a couple fish along the way. So now that we talked about the gear you need to actually fish a chatterbait, let's go ahead and toss one around and see if we can catch a couple fish on it. We got prime time conditions today. We got some overcast, some wind, pre-spawn fish, 56 degree water temperature. Uh, I went with that B height delight jackhammer because we got a little bit of that overcast here today. Not that the water's dirty, uh, but there's a lot of green background. So like you have a lot of green grass growing around um, and just that little extra pop of color can help this fish find it in this dirtier water. And a lot of the bluegills, they have some other colors to them too, besides just a plain green pumpkin. If it was sunny and calm today, I'd probably go plain green pumpkin. I don't think color matters too much. It's just something that looks like a bluegill. Uh, and we're gonna crawl this thing around and see if we can catch us a couple. So we're gonna look for uh, areas these fish can stage up to spawn, places they can just hang out and wait for bluegills, places there are bluegills, that's very key, um, especially in the springtime here. So if there's bluegills uh, just hanging out, sunning themselves, places that they'll get this time of year, um, that's also where you want to be throwing a chatterbait because that's where the bass are going to be. So a lot of these docks on the ends of them or even underneath, the bluegills are sunning themselves, they're hanging out up shallow up there. Uh, so the largemouth will be around on these docks as well. So we're going to go ahead and cast it around. We'll show you a little bit about how to fish it. And I don't think we'll have too much of a problem catching a couple of fish on the chatterbait today, but we'll see. So you'll notice with this chatterbait as I'm reeling it in, the one thing I'm not doing is just straight retrieving it. I'm letting it hit the bottom. I'm letting it hit grass that's still growing. Anything I can find, I'm letting it bump into something and I'm snapping my rod tip free from whatever that is. Uh, I'm shaking it free. Even if I'm not hitting something, every once in a while I'll give it a little twitch like that and just cause it to stop and start. You can do it with your reel. You don't have to do super extreme like this going crazy, but just every once in a while, just a little bit of a change in direction. Um, and you want to feel it work its way through that cover and that's going to create a reaction bite. You're basically fishing this thing like it's a square bill crankbait, except it goes through grass really, really well. So it's an excellent bait for covering grass where you'd want to throw like a crankbait and cover some water. Uh, I use it all the time and that's the biggest thing of just like keeping it doing something different. If you just cast it out there and reel it in, you're not going to get the same amount of bites as you would if you're making it do something different as you're fishing it. Uh, and that's just going to create your reaction bite for you. So we're going to keep throwing this thing around. The thing that I always learned when I first started throwing this is especially when you're reeling. So if you're fishing it around grass or something like that, you want to throw it in there as you're reeling it if you feel that blade stop set the hook just like that and then it, what will, two things will happen one you either set the hook on a fish because the fish ate it or two you will snap it free from whatever piece of cover it's stuck in and potentially get a reaction bite and catch a fish so if you're just learning to fish a chatterbait that's the way that i would do it i'd cast it out there i'd reel it in nice and slow when you feel that blade stop moving set the hook and if nothing happens just keep winding and then just keep making cast after cast and doing that uh, and eventually if you're getting that blade stopping and starting and stuck in stuff and snapping it free you're gonna catch some fish and then you'll learn what a bite feels like and different things you can do to catch even more fish on a chatterbait so we'll keep casting this thing around and we're gonna see if we can get one i shouldn't have spoke too soon and said that it was going to be easy to catch fish on a chatterbait because it has not been easy i haven't even had a bite on this thing yet so we'll keep throwing it there we go. that's a good one all righty So perfect example, this is just a big floating dock. It's an area that that fish can hang out and just kind of sit underneath there and wait to go spawn. Chatterbait came by and uh, he could not resist it. So Beehive Delight right in the face. I uh, got that Yamamoto Zacco trailer on there, half ounce jackhammer, just paralleling these docks, casting it in and around that cover and getting some bites. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about how to fish a chatterbait. If you did and want to see another video talking more about the chatterbait, go ahead and check out right here. Hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching. He's not a bad fish. He's ready to go back. See you on the next one.